So good evening and welcome to YZ and Tarn in the uh, South Lake District. This is a fantastic little body of water here just above Far Sori, uh, Hawkshead. This is the first time I've ever been here. I've literally uh, just walked up here, come through the gate, plonked my tripod down and uh, this wonderful view over to, you guessed it, the Langdale Pikes. Now, I've only made one or two images so far and that is just this, this kind of strip across here shooting into the sun again this evening which is always a preference of mine I love warm images with the burst of sun in them yeah so it's uh, it's a lovely evening lovely spot it's blue sky overhead blue sky everywhere but as usual there's a bank of cloud to the west which is going to diffuse the sun any moment now I would imagine but for now, we're getting this glorious light, which is bathing me and the surrounding area. It's quite a challenge with the, uh, the sun so close to you like that, because you can't really see anything else. But when you block it out, it's glorious. So I've just been scouting around my tripod, really, and I've noticed these kind of rocks what are poking out the ground here. So I'm going to go and set up and shoot my favourite portrait style image looking over there. So I'm going uh, to get on with doing that before the sun just dips behind that cloud because once it's done that it'll uh, it'll be rather flat won't it and that might be it for this evening so i'll set up by my rock and i'll uh, i'll maybe talk you through my thoughts and uh, composition there but uh, yeah a beautiful evening in the lake district all over again it's uh, it's been a treat recently what a great spring we're having so far okay so i've uh, i've got myself down low here just by this rock and i've just taken a three bracket shot with the focus on this small rock here the medium rock and then obviously the distance so I don't know if you can see there but the sun is just about to dip behind that um, that bank of cloud there which is going to cut my light short by about half an hour maybe 45 minutes tonight but as it's doing there's a glorious ray coming across here so I'll see if I can uh, I'll see if I can capture that and uh, include that in my image that might make a nice element so I'll show you what I'm seeing here so we've got this rock here and then the uh the larger rock there and then the tarn and the uh what would be the coniston fells leading down to the langdale fells but uh thanks to that bank of cloud we're going to miss it but it's uh, it's going very quickly now so i'll uh, i'll maybe try and take another shot and see if i can capture it okay so here's the first image i've made this evening this is uh, a three stop a three shot stitched panorama with my uh, 135 millimeter lens so hundreds of millions of pixels of detail within this and uh, i've composed it so that i can get this um, the body of the water going around this it almost like forms a natural arc i think it is uh, it's 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 a a dog leg shape if you will which gives us this beautiful diagonal line through the scene up to this patch of trees on the left hand side there and yeah really quite pleased with that as my first image this second image we focus a bit more on the the main backdrop which you've got the beautiful langdale pikes there in very subtle light below um below the cloud there and just picking up these trees on the left hand side i quite like how the water's um it's got a lot of reeds or grass in it which is diffusing the reflections really so i like how we can see the reflection of the trees but it's not a perfect reflection because of the uh because of the texture in the water and again just looking at a, a, another wider panoramic shot here where we've got the um the the arc of the the, the lake or the tarn coming around there and i was quite drawn to these trees on the left actually as they were being backlit and these glorious shadows they were creating running across the uh, the, the the mound on the foreground there so really love how the sun's in there and how that's rendered i think that's a really strong image for me and then again just zooming into uh, this portion i think this this central portion is the real shot for me really i think um where we get more emphasis on the mountains in the background and the layers that you can see there where we've got these beautiful different shades of uh, texture and light coming across the scene there um and and then the, the trees on the left and right the bank of trees and then the water coming down where i've got the I chose to keep the bank in the foreground just to break it up a bit to give it some texture there. 
Okay, and then here's my uh, lovely portrait image. What well, I'm very pleased with how this has come out. I think it's uh, a very strong image for me personally, where we've got this lovely uh, light on the, the the rock in the immediate foreground, and then the texture and the colour in the in the larger rock just in the midground there, and then it falls away to this uh, this grassy portion which is probably a floodplain there before we reach the water and just so glad I captured that sun before it finally dipped behind that cloud there but yeah really pleased how that's come out I think it's uh, a strong image not overly popular portrait images as prints but for me I really do enjoy a portrait print I uh, I think that'll print beautifully with the, the various depth it's got there so yeah very pleased with that one okay so I'm just trying to uh, I'm just trying to capture this wider scene using my 135 millimeter lens here and I'm going to uh, try to block out the sun with one hand and uh, operate the camera with another it's uh, it's quite a challenge but what a beautiful scene really uh, really appealing with the Langdale Pikes there and it's uh, it's looking fantastic I'm going to uh, just moving the camera around a few degrees each time just to make sure I capture more of this wider scene yeah, absolutely fantastic. So we've got Weatherlam, Coniston, Old Man over there. Um, Pico Blisco can just make that out now. Some noisy geese. And this bank of trees just in the, the distance there, really nice. Really fantastic, actually. Okay, so a bit of time has passed now. We can see that the... Uh, the, the situation's changed from a lighting perspective. There's not much or no light on the immediate foreground or maybe not even the, the mid-ground really. But the, look at that beautiful light in the distance there. And uh, this is the effect of that bank of cloud diffusing the light on my uh, foreground. Pretty frustrating, but it gave us this dramatic scene nonetheless. So yeah, pretty pleased with what I've captured. I think given the, the environment I was faced, I've done a reasonable job there. And again, just taking on a tip from previous image review there just cropping into that wider panoramic just brings a bit more emphasis to uh, to the mountains and to the water there again I love how those reflections of those trees there with the orange light reflected in the water and uh, and how the the grass or the reeds in the, in the water there are just diffusing those reflections I find that quite appealing and obviously the layers and the colors in there are very attracted to that as well and then for this image, a square crop, really emphasising that uh, relationship between the foreground and the distance, really. I, I do love a square image. I probably keep saying that, but I think it works quite well for this scene. I chose to compose it this way so that I kept the, the full cloud in there. It's maybe would benefit from being tilted down a little bit, but I didn't want to crop off the top of that cloud. So there is a reason behind that, but I think it works. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, and this next image is just a regular shot out of my camera, a four to three aspect ratio there, where we get to see um, a bit more of the space from the the square crop. But I think the square crop, I find that uh, probably more attractive or maybe the two to one wider aspect. But nonetheless, I think this is a solid enough Im image. Maybe it doesn't work as well as one of the other compositions but um, or the other crops, but yeah, very pleased. Okay, and then revisiting the uh, the two to one aspect ratio there, just as you can see, the light's constantly changing all the time, and we've got the uh, the shaft of light is now moving away from the Langdale Pikes, just touching the top of Harrison Stickle, perhaps in the centre of the scene there. But yeah, just documenting the shot really. I think the the composition was worked out very quickly, and it was just a case of capturing it as the light changed, as the uh, as as the time went on. Now back to a regular crop and I think this one works much better than the previous one I've just shown you and that's probably from positioning the trees on the right there where we've got the reflections in the foreground there and this bank of grass coming in just to break those up there. I really do like how the, the water's reflecting the, um, the sky and it's not a perfect reflection because of the texture of the water there and, and these layers, look at those glorious layers going through right to the distance there. Okay, and then just revisiting the uh, the wider scene again there, capturing all of the water in there, not choosing not to crop that out. So bringing in, you can see how those trees on the left have changed now that they're not backlit. But yeah, a very subtle scene, but maybe not as vibrant as one of the earlier shots, but 
subtle nonetheless, just gives you a good idea of how the landscape changes with the light in such a short space of time, doesn't it? And then again, just a final image looking back over the uh, to the Langdale Pikes there. The light's almost gone now and uh, choosing to recompose with my clump of trees there, but just to use a bit more of this foreground bank, you can see all the grass poking out. I love that transition between the grass and the water and how we've got all these spiky pieces of grass coming out and uh, the shape of that foreground, that's really appealing to me. And then obviously we've got the peninsula there on the left and then we've got all these layers and the colours, really quite appealing. Very pleased with how those images have come out even after the best of the light's gone. So a fantastic evening of landscape photography in a new location yet again here at Wisey and Tarn. It's, uh, it's uh, after sunset now, or oh, let me check, uh, yeah just after sunset, a bit of colour in the sky with the really high clouds but as uh, unfortunately for me I got this bank of cloud which you'll have seen throughout the video which has kind of robbed me of the last um, last half hour of direct sunlight on the landscape but nonetheless it was uh, good to be here good to be making new images i had a wander down to the uh, water's edge there there's a, a lot of reeds it's quite boggy down there but i made some images from down there uh, again just a strip looking across the um, the side i've also found the uh, the drone quite a useful tool as well just to have a fly around to areas so i can check it out see if it's worth um, a wander over there and then you can turn it to the view you'd like it helps to uh, to give you a bit of an insight into further off um, vantage points really so that's been quite a quite a useful aid to my kit this evening so yeah i've focused i came away from there and i focused on the uh, the the reeds or the grasses growing out of the lake or the the town there and and that was quite enjoyable i find these abstract shots uh, detailed shots quite um quite a challenge to make quite interesting if you get it right as well i'm not sure i have tonight it's a bit messy down there really so not overly sure my images will amount to anything from that but nonetheless nice to be focused on something different and uh, and just taking it in really so I'll run through some of the images here and uh, show them to you, give you my thoughts on what's worked and what hasn't worked, and we'll see what we think. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Like I say, this was my first visit tonight and pretty impressed, to be honest. I mean, I've got a glorious evening. As you can see there, it's still worth photographing, really. I've just made a couple more shots from here now, but I'll, uh, I'll have a look through all the images I've taken, pick out my favourites, and we'll, uh, we'll run through them here. Okay, so the final batch of images now, and this is a fantastic image, if I don't mind saying so myself. This is really appealing to me. So I'm down by the uh, the water's edge now, and I've got my long lens with the extender on. So this is around about 180 millimeters. And look at those layers. Look at that tree on the right. This is really a beautiful image to me. I, I love how we've got the layers there and... Uh, the, the the beautiful sky reflecting in the water absolutely fantastic and then by the the, the side of the water there just taking a, a look inside of the uh, the reeds there see the grass coming out i think this square crop works quite well i'm surprised i've got an image which is i find so attractive to be honest it was a bit of a mess with all the grass growing around but just picking out these um these few clumps here and cropping the the image to a square format to clean it up has worked quite well i'll show you just for context what it looks like not cropped and you can see there that the uh the images uh there's obviously a lot more detail now what i wanted to do when i took that was make it into a panoramic either a three to one or two to one aspect ratio but it just didn't work i wasn't um zoomed out far enough with this one three five millimeter lens it's um it would have cropped the grass off either the reflection or the top and i think that i don't think that would have worked for this image so just leave it as the uh as that ratio there that's three to two actually so 35 mil format okay and this uh this this final run of images now no direct light at all anywhere now really other than in the sky but look at the glorious reflections in the water there and just how i've mentioned this in a previous video about how sunsets work really well when you've got water in the foreground because it helps to illuminate what is otherwise a dark um foreground so i think for me there's there's a lot of contrast in there and it works quite well not sure if it'll be like a good print but i'll do like the image nonetheless 
Okay, and then revisiting the, the wider panoramic scene, and the, these images are just more to document to you what it was like, really. I don't think all of these are, are going to see the light of day further than this video, really, but it just goes to show how um, a landscape can change with the, the light. I'm not sure if that would make a, a good print because it's a bit too dark, really, for me, not any major focal point from an illumination point of view. A beautiful scene, though, really pleased with the composition, just could do with a bit more light. Okay, and then this next image, again, just a tighter crop. I really do like taking two versions of panoramics, one's wider and then one cropping in on the detail. I think we get a lot more emphasis on the, the geometry within the scene there, and this is a good example of that, where the focus on the trees and the reflections of those trees with the, the lovely colour works really well for me, and those textures and the layers. Look at the layers in the background. Really delighted how that's come out. That's uh, a nice image for me, that one. I love how the... Uh, the foreground there just cups the river as well. Very nice. Okay, so this final image is made on my 45mm lens. What I've cropped to a 3 to 1 aspect ratio there for a more panoramic feel. And you can see how we've captured a much wider section of the, uh, the tarn there now. You can see a little bit of colour in the sky with the afterglow from the sun. This is after sunset now. Or after the sun has set, should I say. And yeah... It's an okay scene. I like the tree on the right. It, it just needs a bit more light, and I think this is certainly a location for me to revisit at different times of day and spend a bit more time wrecking through the situation, really. Okay, now this uh, this is a drone image. So this is an image what I made on the walk into uh, Wyzean Town there, and this is um, this is a body of water just below Wyzean, and what a fantastic image from. Uh, a point of view i mean the drone is just going to open up so many opportunities for me to create these unusual perspectives and i just love how this low side light is giving us this ultimate green supreme image what a fantastic vantage point to be able to get up there with the drone this uh, this next shot here is obviously a, a much wider perspective i've taken three exposures here and stitched them together maybe a bit overexposed for the sun there but you know it is the sun i think my focus of the exposure was more on this glorious foreground i just love how this uh, this low light brings out the shape and the contours and these long shadows it's absolutely remarkable how uh, how i can now get a camera up in the air and make images like this i'm looking forward to uh, some opportunities with that and again just recomposing this final image here to uh, put some emphasis on the path i guess coming in from the left hand side leading us up to the body of water there and again these patches of glorious light coming through the trees on the left and then the the rim light on these uh, these trees arcing around on the right there really bringing that to life leading us into the cliff heights in the distance there and the higher fells above so yeah i didn't really compose that but i'm quite pleased at how it's come out i think it's uh, it's worked well so all in all a good shoot so once again thanks for watching thanks for supporting my channel and my photography i appreciate your positive encouragement and uh, support with my channel if you'd like to support more of me and my photography and if you'd like to own some of my photography in the medium that it was meant to be seen in which is print then there's no better way to do that than through a framed print of one of my pictures which you can find on my website or more one of my coffee table books so i've self-published two coffee table books here in the lake district uh, both contain over 100 images from all over the lake district and uh, I'd be grateful of your support with, uh, with either or both of those books. Okay, well, thanks again, and I'll catch you again on the next video. All the best for now. Bye-bye.